You are welcome to the Show of Fire live conference. The platform the Almighty God has given to us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And that's why we are here, brothers and sisters, that he, Jesus, the way, the one who says, I am the door, will continue to lead us, guide our lives by his truth. And so we will continue to enjoy God's blessings here on earth. And beyond this world, continue according to his will and his plan for our lives to enjoy that eternal life that he has kept for us. Our theme and topic for the teaching today is new creation. New creation. So you can say the new creation. Glory be to God, the new creation. Our text is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 15. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 15. I will read. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. I take that again. Galatians, chapter 6, verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision no uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. A new creation. This was Paul speaking, the word of truth. He said circumcision, no uncircumcision, didn't matter, avails nothing, because when it comes to God, they don't count. So this was a clear divide between two uh, groups of people. The Jews had received the law, the law of Moses. And of course, right from Abraham, the, command, the covenant of circumcision was given to him. And that was magnified in the law that was given to Moses. But Jesus came and gave a new commandment. <laughs> Not that he gave a new commandment, but the almighty God himself, through his son Jesus Christ, made a new covenant through the blood of Jesus with all humankind. And in that new covenant, something new happened. And so Paul was trying to help the people of Galatia, the Galatians, to understand the dispensation of the grace of God that has been made available to them. That in this dispensation, where the Gentiles as the Galatians were, have been brought into God and into this everlasting covenant. Circumcision, no uncircumcision, avails nothing. Let's bring this to today. So, if you want to pitch this, the outward person the material religious rights, which circumcision was, and those who didn't follow those outward material or religious rights, which on circumcision was, were both the same and did not count and don't count in this grace. So what then counts in this grace? This grace is called the new creation. <laughs> oh, beloved brothers and sisters, what was Paul talking about here? 
new creation. I have come to challenge you and to challenge myself that we pay attention to the critical things that the Bible teaches and has spoken to us. So let me make that statement again that your religious right is not important before God. Your piousness is at best like filthy rocks before God. What is important is the new creation. The new creation. And so, as I always tell us, when you want to study something deep, ask yourself, what is it? What is this about? What does it mean? Why is it important? And how do I do it? Get it done. Acquire it, possess it, exercise or manifest it. How? So the what, the why, the how. We're going to go through this is again. But of course, we'll go in between, as I've all, always told us as well, that while using that process, it's not like we're going to continually say, what is it? How? Why? But it will we'll go in between. So let's go a bit deeper into this. We have done a lot of studies since uh, August 2020, and we are still on it. And it's been on this slim little book. Who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? Because as we have stated in this book, that a Christian is one who is like Christ, and therefore is undergoing a journey to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And we have covered a lot of things, but let me just read two lines. The Lord asked me to put this message, which he gave me and taught me, and make it free and available. This is what we've been teaching. And we have gone for uh, almost uh, a year and a half, or almost getting to two years now, and we're still digging deeper into it. So page six of it, page six of it, I want to read a line there. This is what it means to be like Christ or to be a Christian. It is only possible by being born of the Holy Spirit. So a Christian is a very unique creature of God. And there is no other creature like a Christian because he or she is born by the Holy Spirit of God. Let me read from page 10 as well, page 10 of the book. And the whole book, it's uh, uh, 12 pages, has 12 pages. Page 10, the last paragraph. Hear this and pay attention to this. A Christian is a unique creature of God. And there is no other creature of God like a Christian. A unique creature of God. And there is no other creature of God like a Christian. No one is born naturally a Christian, but only the one God recreates. You probably have been reading and you don't pay attention to this and you let no emphasis. Listen to that again. No one is born naturally a Christian, but only the one God recreates by his Holy Spirit after receiving forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and his blood, that is being born again by the Spirit of God. So when we talk about a Christian, we're talking about one that is like Christ. And 
No natural man can be like Christ. Just like Paul said, that it is not by your rituals. It is not by your religious practices like circumcision or non-practices like uncircumcision, but it is a new creation. I know there are many people who say, I am a Christian because they go to church. We are not talking about that type of Christian here. Those are clement Christians, but it's good. Please go to church. It's good. Church is good. But as you go to church, do pay attention to what it means to be a Christian. Now, so we're going to that level where we want to explore this secret of new creation. Let me also read to you what a man of God, E.W. Kenyon, said in his book, The Wonderful Name of Jesus. So you can come and comprehend where we are going to. Before I read that, remember, when we were studying the abundant life in Christ Jesus, which was also an offshoot of, our, of this journey that we are embarking on, growing to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We talked about six key elements or key headlines that you must begin to understand the word of God deeply and live your life according to in order to enjoy the abundant life that Jesus Christ has obtained for you and I to enjoy while here on earth and beyond this world, continue to enjoy that eternal life. One of the key headlines is divine power, divine power. And we're continuing to look how do we enjoy that abundant life by the divine power of God that is made available to us. And so that's where the topic, the new creation or new creation sits. So let me read excerpts from E.W. Kenyon from his book, The Wonderful Name of Jesus. I read, oh, that our eyes may be opened, that our souls will dare rise to the realm of omnipotence, that the name of Jesus Christ will mean to us all that the Father has invested in it, that we would act up to our high privileges in Christ Jesus. This is practically an unexplored table land in Christian experience. Here and there, we have experienced some level of the authority vested in the name of Jesus. We have seen them walk, blind see, deaf hear, disease healed, those in the shadow of death, and even the dead, emphasis mine, brought back to life instantly. I believe some of you have seen the miracles of God in your life. He went on, he said, but so far, none of us has been able to take a permanent place in our privileges and abide where we may enjoy the fullness of this mighty power. But we have a conviction that before the Lord Jesus returns, there will be a mighty army of believers who will learn the secret of living in the name of reigning in life. Living the victorious, transcendent resurrection life of the Son of God among men. I want to read that again, take that again so you can understand. He said, but we believe. But we have a conviction that before the Lord Jesus returns, 
there will be a mighty army of believers who will learn the secret living in the name, which name? The name of Jesus, of reigning in life, living the victorious transcendent resurrection life of the Son of God among men. That is exercising, manifesting Jesus Christ who lives in us, who has made us Christians in his own image and likeness, the same way he manifested in Peter, in Paul, in Philip, in John, in Stephen, and the rest of the apostles of the first century. This is the provision of God for you and for me. We are new creations. We have been recreated, but it takes the consciousness of this truth for us to live the life of this recreated being called a Christian. So as that statement there says, a Christian is a unique creature of God. And there is no other creature of God like a Christian. A new creation is not an ordinary creature. He, is, he, he or she is not a natural creature. Is a recreated being. He is a special being. He is a unique being. So you are a unique being, brothers. You are a unique being, sisters. You are no longer ordinary. And so I've come to challenge you today to rise up to the secret of the new creation and live the life God Almighty has made for you, made for me, made for us to live. New creation means that we have been recreated, just like the Bible says clearly. It means we have been born of the Spirit of God. It means that we are no longer ordinary natural beings as we came out of our mother's wombs, just to remind us the book of John, which we all know, chapter one. Let's revisit it, verse 11 and 12. Let's look at it again, verses 11 and 12. Okay, let's stay in verse 12. But as many as received him, received him who? Jesus. To them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Let's look at verse 13. Look at it with me. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. New creation. We are talking about those who have been transformed into the likeness and the image of the Son of God. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, look at it with me. It says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, transformed into the image of his son. New creation. No more ordinary, but born of the spirit of God. You are a special being. We are special beings. 
or rather put it correctly, we are a special being. A Christian is a special being. The same way our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was transformed. So he, or God, through Jesus, by Christ Jesus, has transformed us. You know, Jesus Christ stepped out of eternity into humanity stepped out of God, divinity, into humanity, and died and rose from the dead. The body was transformed, changed. And he, again, transformed from humanity into eternity. And so Jesus Christ is the only being that is divine and human and human and divine. And so Jesus has the ability to operate through our eternity and to operate in this physical world. The omnipotence of God has been vested in him. He is special. And that's why Philippians 2, 9 says that God has highly exalted him. Let's just read that to remind ourselves, and then we'll look at a few things. Philippians 2, from verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did you see that? Being in the form of God, some translations say in the same substance as God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Being in the same form, in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant. So Jesus, in the form of God, in the same nature and substance as God, came down to take on humanity and was transformed from that humanity back into divinity, into God. Hallelujah. And so Jesus... Through him, therefore, we who are naturally human, humanity, have been given the nature of divinity. Hallelujah. And that's what Second Peter 1 verse 4 said. But we'll come back to that. So let's read this through. So Jesus stepped out or stepped into this world, this humanity, took on humanity and was transformed back, being the firstborn from the dead, into the divine, where he sits at the right hand of God, having all authority, all power, all dominion in heaven and on earth. So let's read through. So we're in verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, 7, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man. Did you see that? He took on humanity for a purpose. Eight, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. But having died, his body did not decay but was transformed. Oh, that special one. Jesus is the special one. He is both divine and human. And human and divine. And so he came 
and has made us, he who was divine, came and took on humanity. And through him, we who were humans, he has made to share in his divinity. Hallelujah. You are not ordinary brothers and sisters. I am not ordinary. We are not ordinary. We are new creations. Or rather, a new creation. We have been recreated through Jesus Christ. Let's read 9 and uh, 10. So we'll leave it there. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. So this Jesus has been lifted to the highest position that all creation of God should be subject to him in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth. Look at it. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I know somebody will be wondering, say, how is this possible? Yes, this is the mystery. But God has always made it so. It has always been God's desire to renew us when by his spirit. In fact, God demonstrated this a number of times in the olden times. Like if you check 1 Samuel chapter 10, 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 6, when Saul was appointed king, Saul was appointed king. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. This was Samuel speaking to Saul, the king in the Old Testament. I'm reading 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. I'll read it again. Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Ordinary Saul. It says, once the spirit comes upon you, you shall no longer be that ordinary soul. You will be turned into another man. Brothers and sisters, stop looking down on yourself. You are a recreated being by the spirit of God through Jesus Christ. You are a new creation. I am a new creation. I am not an ordinary man. And so, as E.W. Kenyon said, this is that dispensation. E.W. Kenyon, if I recall correctly, died in 1948. We are in that move. So I want to ask you, are you among those believers, men like E.W. Kenyon prophesied? He said, we believe or we have the conviction that before the return of Jesus Christ, our Lord, there will rise an army of believers who will discover the secret of walking in the omnipotent power of the Son of God. That is, allowing Jesus manifest in you, manifest in me, the same way he manifested in Peter, the same way he manifested in Paul. The apostle. Oh, Jesus so manifested in Paul, so much so that if you remember in the book of Acts and in the, in the life of Peter, Acts chapter 19, if you recall about Paul, so manifested that handkerchief from his body was taken, the sick will be healed, the demon possessed will be set free. And something very interesting happened there. Because some exorcists, when they saw that, they said, uh -uh. this thing that is happening, this name of Jesus, let us also do the same. Look at Acts chapter 19, because I want to bring it to a close here so we can have this caution. Because this is 
not just ordinary session. This month of new creation, the power of the resurrection will manifest in you and I in the name of Jesus. Will manifest in you, will manifest in me. Will manifest in you and me in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verse 15. But before I read verse 15, let's remind ourselves of verse 11 and 12. Here, verse 11 and 12. He said, now God walked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, verse 12, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body. He didn't pray. It was from his body because he is a new creation, recreated by the spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, you are not ordinary. Stop living as an ordinary man, as an ordinary woman. We are not ordinary. Stop being caged. Stop hiding. We have this treasure in heaven vessel that the excellency of the power might be unto God, not of us. Let's go on. So that even handkerchiefs or apron were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. 14. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. <laughs> Pick this key. Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you? Declare unto yourself. Because Jesus has brought the divine into me, I am known in Jesus. Amen? Do you understand that? Beloved, the divinity in you must manifest in your humanity. Hear me again. The divinity in you, the divine nature in you must manifest in your humanity. It must manifest. If we say that Jesus dwells in us, if I say that Jesus dwells in me, if you say that Jesus dwells in you by the spirit of God that has been given to us, Christ in us, the hope of glory must manifest his glory in us and through us. That's who the new creation is. The devil knows who the new creation is or new creature is because he is in Christ and Christ is in him. And so here in Acts chapter 19, verse 15, the demon said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know because Paul is in Christ and Christ is in Paul. Paul is a new creature. But you, I don't know you. We will draw it here, brothers and sisters, because there's a lot to say. There is a lot to say. So I'll draw the line here. So to summarize, just to close for today, there is tremendous power vested in the new creation. We have been recreated by the spirit of God through Jesus Christ. It is now incumbent upon us to, number one, be conscious of who we are. Number two, begin to discover the secret of manifesting the divine power that has been given to us. If you have not therefore come into Jesus Christ, you are not part of what we are discussing because as you have seen, the devil tore the ordinary person that was trying to cast them out to shreds. And that's what is going on today in the world, in life. But as a new creation, oh, we have been given the power and authority to cast out demons. 
to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. This is what we want to explore deeper on this theme, the new creation. The Almighty God bless you. And so if you would like to give your life to Jesus right now and be a partaker of this blessing, just pray with me right away. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege you have given to me to be a new creation, to be recreated by your spirit through Jesus Christ, your son, the son of God, my Lord and my savior who died for me. And now, Lord, God Almighty, I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. And I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord. From today, I forsake all my sins and I ask Almighty God, forgive me all my sins. And now wash me with the precious blood of Jesus and give me your Holy Spirit and make me a new creation through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. This is where we'll pause and uh, maybe you have something to add to ask. We'll spend the next five minutes and I can answer your question and we'll go deeper into this study. Um, next Sunday, it's uh, Covenant, New Covenant Sunday as we go deeper into this. So uh, make it a, a date uh, and invite people anywhere because it's not just going to be ordinary talk. We here with you, if you have become a new creation, we will pray. And the power of the new creation that we have been made in Christ Jesus will manifest. The Almighty God bless you. So feel free, open the line now. If you have a question, you have any clarification to make or anything to add, please feel free. Brassoni, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Pastor. I don't really have a question to ask, but I just want to uh, bring out my understanding of what you just taught today by the Spirit of God. Uh, I'm really excited about the, the fact that um, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And as we read in the Bible, uh, the new creation does not depend on whether I am a, a Jew or I'm not a Jew, but everything comes through Christ Jesus. And then the next thing I have, I have to really say is, uh, is that uh, our becoming Christians or claiming to be Christians or getting the right as Christian is not by just uh, saying it. It's not by words. It's not by words. And it's not in, the, in our position in life. Or, uh, but it really depends on our possessing Christ. So that's what I see in that uh, Act chapter 19, verse 15. Those men, they maybe they look at their position. Some of them, they, I would say that they were sons of a great man or whatever, a great king there, or a great chief. But they, they, they never had Jesus Christ. So they felt that because of their position and what they want to gain from it, they, they feel that they could actually talk to the demon or the devil possessed man, and the man would just go like that. But here, they, even the devil himself, I'm also excited about the fact that even the evil spirit, recognize the fact that we have to possess Jesus Christ in our life, not by position. Those are the things I really pick out from what you said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Insightful as always, Brother Sonny. That's very good. Next, glory be to God. Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Your line is open. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the, I don't know how to describe the teaching of today. It was energetic, <laughs> it was spiritually guided, <laughs> and that you concluded it so well. Who we must know who we are, be conscious of who we are, because it is this lack of consciousness that allows us to sleep, and then we do not use our power and who we are as Christian to achieve what God wants us to do. So thank you so much. In fact, in my meditation today, the song I sang and I used and I kept was, I'm born again, I feel free. 
there is quite different me. No longer I'm tossed like a ship on unruly sea. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed with a love. That means for the rest of my time, all those prayers, they were not in vain. I'm born again. Amen. So it, it, like you said, you confirm, we have to time and time again, realize, be conscious who, of who we are so that that light will shine in us. Our prayer is not in vain. God have heard our prayer. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank so you. We are special, unique, recreated persons because we are Christian. That is who, what you have reminded us today. Yeah. So we should never forget that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we'll just pray at this point. Every one of us want to pray now. Let us pray together. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of new creation in Christ Jesus. Lord, pour your spirit upon me afresh. Pour your spirit upon us, every one of us here afresh. Lord God Almighty, and let us experience the power of this new creation, who we are in Christ Jesus. Cause us to move in this power, O oh God, and glorify you with our lives. Glorify Jesus and let many souls, O oh God Almighty, come into the kingdom by the manifestation of you, God, in us to the world. Thank you, our Father in heaven. To you be all glory and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we'll end and we'll look forward to connecting next Sunday. So God bless you as you uh, continue to pray, continue to walk in the power of a new creation. The Almighty God bless you. Bye-bye.